scores a goal. Can you believe it? It's extraordinary. Does Brad Crouch want out of Adelaide? And what should Adelaide ask in compensation? Bernie Vince will reveal his best Crows 22 for next year. And the Bays win the Sandfall Grand Final. It's our last footy SA for the year. Let's get underway. to another edition of Footy SA Grand Final Week. It is GWS taking on Richmond. Who would have thought that? But Bernie, our attention will turn to Adelaide very, very shortly as I welcome you in again. Yep, thanks, Sammy Kane. Last show. It's gone very quickly, it has hasn't gone, it? 25 shows. You've I think done a it great is. job. Yeah, well, we haven't even had a fight yet. <laughs> no, Maybe no, tonight's the night. Maybe tonight <laughs> is the night. Well, let's get straight into the trade update. It's all thanks to Kia, the V6 twin turbo. Kia Stinger is the West Australian Car of the Year. And Tim Watson had this to say about one of your mates at Adelaide this morning. Brad Crouch, very close to accepting a Gold Coast Suns offer. Brad Crouch is going to accept the Gold Coast very, Suns no, offer? No, no, no. Very close to accepting, OK? The Crows are trying extremely hard to keep him. Well, I'm not sure they should be trying extremely hard to keep him, Bernie. He's got one year to go on his contract. At the end of next year, he becomes a restricted free agent, meaning that Adelaide will essentially get whatever the AFL determine is the right compensation for him. If he goes to Gold Coast... They got picks. They got they pick got one at the picks. moment. They're going to get pick two for the compensation pick from the AFL. They've got a couple of young South Australians by the name of Lacocious and Rankin. I'm just asking for one of those. Brad, you can go, but we want something very, very good for you. You've got to go after pick two, I think. You've got to throw pick two yep. and, and maybe a player. Well, probably pick two on its own is, is probably reasonable, but I know Gold Coast won't give that up, so what are you doing? And it's not really up to Brad Crouch, is it? If he's in contract, he can't just accept an offer. It's not like he's out of contract. No. Um, they have to set up a suitable trade. So, anyone going to be left at Adelaide at the moment? It yeah. seems like everyone's walking out. They're going to have to replace all these. Hey, see, I'm not as dire about the Adelaide situation. So, so Keith wants a long-term deal. I'm not giving him that at 28. Greenwood's the same. I'm not sure he deserves a long-term deal. Sam Jacobs, you can't do much about a free agent who's 31. Some others, Jenkins, can you move him on? Probably if you can. And, and then Crouch is the big one, of course. We'll speak about the Brownlow last night, but he polled the most votes in the Brownlow. We'll probably win their best and fairest. So at 25, I'm not sure you can rely on his body. You haven't been able to in the past. I know he got through a full season this year, but he can go, but I want something extremely good in return. And the Crows hold all the power because, as you say, he's contracted. Certainly is. Yeah. And, and I'd like to see him put a couple of good seasons together, as, as you said. He's had an outstanding year. Um, which has been a pretty unsuccessful year for the Adelaide Football Club as a team. But I'd like to see him put two or three years together and then he can sort of demand mm. that big money, I mm. guess, from other clubs. But do you want to be going to a Gold Coast? Well, that's the point. Uh, obviously, he it believes be big money. It, it is a money decision, well, it, really. He's not, he's not going there for success, no, no. unless he thinks that Gold Coast can turn what, it around in five worth? years. What do you think he's worth? I think he's a, a $600,000, $650,000 yeah. midfielder. I don't think he's got the runs on the board to, to demand anything other than that. So but they'd, they'd be offering overs Well, they'd have, they to, have to. to, yeah. So what's overs? What, we're talking nine hundred. dollars He's probably going to get that sort of money, yeah, and man. it's impossible to refuse, because Gold Coast needs some bigger bodies with all the youngsters coming through. Yeah. The other one as well that's being linked to Gold Coast is another Adelaide midfielder, Hugh Greenwood. We know he wants a three-year or more deal at Adelaide, which the Crows have said he's not going to get. Uh, and, and I'm OK with them holding firm on Greenwood. I'd give him two years. I think that's what he has shown he is worthy of. I wouldn't give him anything more than that. Is he a big loss? Uh, well, you don't want to see any player that's required leave, but I'm with you a little bit. I think two years is OK. Mm. Let's see you put a few good years together before we start talking sort of those longer-term deals, bigger money. So, um, the, yeah, the talk, I guess, in, in Melbourne at the moment is Adelaide do have to eventually pay up for these players. But yep. that's been their mantra throughout their whole... Well, that's why you left, because they wouldn't pay you any money. i got less to leave, Kane. <laughs> that's not true. That is, that is an actual true. lie. Let's get Justin Reid in here. <laughs> uh, he's Adelaide List Imagine now. We you did not double. leave for less. Uh, it's the same. Yes, it's the yeah, same. I got that yeah. out of it. Yeah, yeah, of course, he didn't leave for less. Sam Jacobs is off as well. Crow's offering him a one-year deal. They did confirm last week that Big Source will exercise his right to free agency. No word for what... Club he's going to join yet, but we all believe that is GWS. So for me, 
There's two gaping holes in Adelaide's list. It's a backup ruckman yep. for Riley O'Brien, and we, we've heard that uh, Adelaide are targeting a Port Adelaide player. We'll get to that shortly. Yep. And it's a small forward because Eddie Betts has said that he wants to get back to Carlton. So not sure you can rely on Gallucci and Lockie Murphy at Adelaide. So in this trade period, they've got to find a backup to O'Brien and they've got to find a small forward. Mm. And, and probably, I don't know if there's anything coming up in the draft, but it's hard to get players coming out of Melbourne to, to go over to Adelaide. So... Um, it's going to be a tough one to, mm. to fill, but maybe maybe Frampton. Oh, Billy, maybe. Big, big Billy. Maybe. because He had a good SNFL season. Yeah, he had a good SNFL season. Unfortunately, on the weekend in the grand final, just didn't have his kicking boots on. But I don't mind, don't mind this from Adelaide, but once again, he's a speculative player that's not going to walk in straight away to their best 22. They've got Himmelberg there already, and he's not a big ruckman to me. He's more of a key forward. So... Does he fit in the forward line with Walker and Fogarty and Jenkins if he's still there? Probably not for me. He's going to have to play a fair bit of ruck time. So he'll be looking for more opportunities and, and probably unlikely to be at Port Adelaide next year. Yeah, no, nah, good call. Let's get into the Sandville update because it was the big one on the weekend. Glenelg snapped the 33-year premiership drought by Balfour's Pie for a Sandville ticket. Visit balfours.com.au. They were unbelievable, the Tigers. Mark Stone, their coach, has got them playing a very, very entertaining and tough brand of footy, Bernie. Did you catch much of it? And uh, everyone is happy at Brighton Road at the Bay. I oh, did, didn't they? Jump out of the blocks oh. well, Kane. They were uh, outstanding. What about the crowd? Nearly 40,000 people there, which was great to see. And a great day for South Australian footy because it's been too long. It's been too long yep. since the Bays won. And I think it was 86, was it, Kane? And was that, was that the day your dad walked into the opposition room? Because I watched a film <laughs> clip on that. And he was lucky to get out of that ground alive. Uh, he basically went in there after yeah. that won and sprayed him and he said did. you will never win another uh, one again. Uh, he actually did. He's that got was, some front. I that, thought you had some front. Uh, I know where you get it. So that was in 1990. <laughs> oh, that that 90. was when they lost. Oh, so when they lost. He, he walked Sorry. into the victorious Port Adelaide rooms and, of course, oh, Port Adelaide trying geez. to get into the AFL and he had a bit of a crack at them. There was a fair bit a, going a on bit behind the scenes and that's where the hatred stems from. So he's very happy on the weekend. Yeah. As you saw on the oh, social yeah. media clip that I posted, on Sunday, I was there with the game with him and he didn't know that I was recording this. This was the goal winner where he realised I'd won it. And they're strangers. He doesn't know those people. <laughs> oh, they're his mate. No, nah, he does not know. Oh. He's loving it. And then you speak about the nerve. <laughs> How is him in a second? You're going to see him just waltz it's up to the, the coach's back box, is of it? the... Oh, you didn't oh, they see cut it there. Short. They, they cut it short. That wasn't the coach's box. He goes up and double fists the glass. He does all of that. And that was that, that was the opposition room? No, that was, that was the Glenelg oh, coach's God. box. I thought it was Port Adelaide's no, again. No, I thought he wanted no, blood no, again. Well, 1990. Chad, Chad was in there. So family oh, was split. Right, Chad okay. wasn't happy. Graham was. But... Got to say, he was ecstatic, as were a lot of the 39 and 100 people at Adelaide Oval on Sunday. It was a great occasion. Well, well done to Glenelg. I know how much it means to everyone at the Glenelg Footy Club and well done to the players who were at the uh, brewery today. Yeah, and that'd just be, unveiling. Yeah. They'd be getting a bit messy by this <laughs> stage, I think. Because <laughs> Anzac Highway was shut down from all reports. Jetty Road's been shut down for yeah. well, since Sunday afternoon. and. Doesn't look to be reopening any time no. soon. So uh, just if you want to go down for a quiet one, the boys will be spread out across Glenelg and they'll be coming back. Exactly right. Massive show coming up. Bernie Vince and myself are going to reveal what Port Adelaide and the Crows will look like in 2020, if there's any Crows players left. And we'll also reveal our Repco Authorised Service Centre Player of the Year. That's all coming up on a big edition of Footy SA. Congratulations to your 2019 a Brownlow medal winner for the second time, Nat Fife. Welcome back to Footy SA. It's all thanks to Kia, home to Australia's best seven-year warranty. You know the thing that hurts most about Fife winning his second Brownlow? What hurts? In 2009, Port Adelaide had three picks inside pick 20. Oh, no. They picked mm. John Butcher, Andrew Moore, Jasper ooh. Pittard. Ooh, ooh. None of those three there. are at the club. Nat Fife was picked at pick 20 and Port Adelaide could have had him. Oh, no. Ouch. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. So don't do that, fans. Oh. Don't go and look at which players you could have had in previous drafts. Let's talk about the Brownlow, though, from Port Adelaide and Adelaide's perspective. The top five from Port Adelaide were as follows. Travis Boat, we know, had a sensational year. Robbie Gray, Tom Rockcliffe, and, and not much after those. Nah, pretty quiet night, wasn't it, for both SA teams? But... Uh, 
Didn't pull that well, but both of you had a fantastic yep. year. Probably unlucky to be all Australian in here. I thought he could have probably snuck in there on the bench, but a uh, very good year from him. Has polled more votes than any Port Adelaide player in the history of the club. We're rolling to Adelaide's that man, Brad Crouch, his brother Matt, Rory Sloan, and, and we think Brad probably wins their best and fairest, don't we? I, I think he does, yeah. Uh, close to probably Sloan, he will be, will be pushing him, probably his brother Matt, but. Um, Again, a little bit lean, wasn't it, in the voting for, for Adelaide as well. So a bit of a disappointing year for both teams, looking to rebound. It was. All year we've been casting our votes for the Repco Authorised Service Centre Player of the Year. And tonight we can finally reveal who it is. Your local mechanic with the nationwide backing of Repco. Book your next car service at repcoservice.com.au. And there it is. There it is. Brad Crouch, Brad Crouch. And Lucky Bernie. Lucky Repco Authorised Service Centres are nationwide. Oh, because they are. Brad wins free servicing for a year at Gold their Coast. local Repco Authorised Service Centre. That's what valued at $1,000. Well, I'm just saying, Lucky. He hasn't <laughs> signed yet. In case he leaves. He's not going anywhere. But Repco are national. Well, oh, that's lucky. Oh, yes, good from Repco, but not good for Brad Crouch going to the Gold Coast. No, but there you go. Congratulations. You had a magnificent year and just goes to show when he gets himself fit and when he yep. gets himself going and has a full pre-season, that's what he's capable of. One more ball than, than any other Crows player, of course, with his brother Matt, who are absolute ball magnets. And if they lose him, they'd want to get something good for him. They're, they might lose Eddie Betts as well. I think they will. He's, has he requested to go to Carlton? I hear a lot about Eddie Betts. Has he said, I want to go to Carlton? There's a lot of talk Did about Carlton it. want him? Well, there's a lot of talk about that. We're not sure, but I wouldn't think Eddie's going to leave Adelaide, say I want to go to Carlton, reject an offer from yeah. the Gold Coast and not have a home I for hear, them not to want him. I hear Carlton only want to give him one year anyway. So... Would you pack up and leave for one year again, or do you stay in Adelaide? He's got a decision there to well, make. you know, Eddie. Get on the phone and ring him and I bring asked, something I to the table. Him. Bring us an I, exclusive. I'll bring it next week. Yeah, no, he won't be here. <laughs> uh, but he's no stranger to a goal of the year win, and it was no different last night at the Brownlow Medal. He was awarded goal of the year for this. That's an unbelievable goal. Oh, that was in his He does it too game. often oh, for that to no, be a fluke. It's definitely not a fluke. That is unbelievable. I don't even think about having a shot from there. I'm thinking, who can I pass it to? <laughs> I don't and even have just, a left foot. <laughs> yeah. He just slots him there for oh, a laugh. So Adelaide fans might have seen the last of that. Let's listen to Eddie last night after he was awarded the goal of the year again. Thanks to Adelaide Football Club um, for giving me the opportunity to play footy. And, uh, yeah, fourth goal of the year. Yeah, I can't believe it, to be honest. <laughs> Short and sweet with a bit of humour for Eddie Betts. He's a bit longer than Liam Ryan's speech, though. Was that was, uh, thanks, Max. I think was that the best mark of the year, Liam Ryan? Uh, I, I was very good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Was I, it? I think I, I think they got it right. Yeah, no I think complaints. They did. No complaints. Degree there. of difficulty. There Max you have Ryan. it. So up next, we're going to reveal our best 22 starting for the Crows and Port Adelaide in 2020. It looks okay. Uh, you can have your say as well. Stick around for Footy SA on the other side of this. and footy go together like grass stains on a gurney. To celebrate this perfect match, we're giving away a footy every day this season. Just share your perfect footy moment, tag Balfour's Bakery and use the hashtag TakeAsBecky to enter. Whether meeting your footy hero, celebrating a victory or taking a specky mark, Balfour's and footy, the perfect match. Go get them. Yes, that is our Balfour's Take a Specky promotion. Share your perfect footy moment. Visit balfours.com.au. Welcome back to Footy SA. Very shortly, we're going to reveal our best 22s for season 2020. It's all thanks to OTR and Kia. Kia, home to Australia's best seven-year warranty. And OTR, always making life easier. It is our OTR takeaway. Bernie, you're not it at the plasma no, tonight. We're going to do different. something a little bit different and look ahead to the future. This final series dropped by your nearest OTR and score a great deal. Let's start with your Crows best 22 for season 2020. What do you think? There's a gap there on the wing already that I've noticed. Yeah, there certainly is. And I want to, I want people to prove that they're not in the team. The Bryce Gibbses, the Paul Seismans. I want uh, Rory Atkins to prove why I should pick them yep. on the wing. And there's probably some guys that I picked hoping they're going to have good seasons next year. But I think this team needs to go away, have a nice little break and come back really hungry to be good again. Because what I saw this year, I didn't like. Mm. So um, a lot of guys need to prove themselves. and. Um, they could battle a bit, the Crows, next year if they don't 
don't get things right. And I mean, there's a lot, a lot of change. Obviously, the yep. coach hasn't been selected yet. We don't know if the footy manager is still going to be there. So, need to get all those uh, criteria done first, I guess. And then the players can go to work. Bit worried about that bench there. Ellis Yolm and Hardigan, McAdam. I'm not sure about. And Galucci, I still think there's some question marks on him. Albeit. He was a first round draft pick. Let's look towards Port Adelaide. It's pretty, pretty settled, to be honest. I don't think they're going to do too much in the trade period. We know Ryder's going to join St Kilda, but I think the back line has got some, a good mix of youth and experience. The midfield has always concerned me. I think there's too many similar types in there. That's why Dan Houston needs to play in there full time. Forward line has some potential, but once again, it's pretty tall with Lysett. Where does he play? Do they fit Laddams in there? And then, you know, there's still some veterans in there. What do you get from Rockcliffe, Westoff? Robbie Gray's a little bit older and he's still banged up and Travis Boak's not getting any younger. So it's a solid team, but it lacks stars, I think. It lacks star potential to get them towards the top four where they need to be. Yeah, it sort of smells of a middle-of-the-road yeah, team again, doesn't it? Which is not where bit. you want to be. Nah, it's not where you want to be. You don't want to waste time in the middle of the road, Kane. Get hit by a car. <laughs> now, oh, who's the captain? I want to know who's captain. You're going with co-captain. Good question. No, I'm not. Uh, I, I think Tom Jonas will be the sole captain next year. Yep. I think that's the way that they would go as well. But that will be a decision that probably won't be revealed until February. Now, one man who was captain was Travis Boak. He's going to win the John Cale medal for his second best and fairest at Port Adelaide. Here's some of his season highlights. And I know you were so impressed with his ability to gut run and cover the ground. Yeah, he's an incredible runner. And it's just built on pure work rate. And I hope the Crows, some of the Crows players look at the way Travis Boak trains and prepares to play because he's elite and he's been elite for a long time and nearly had potentially a he's had some very good years so he yep. wouldn't say career best year but he's right up there with his best years so um, that was built off pure work rate and he went back into the midfield so been a good player for a long time and I, I loved his season one man who wasn't a gut runner but G knew where the goals were and that is gut, Nathan Brown he's on the Richmond train <laughs> he's a former Richmond great he's all for sports bet in the house Brownie couple of cashies this week Kane <laughs> I, uh, I just watched some of your um, rooster work I like that uh, you like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit acting. yourself on Twitter. Yeah, very good, see, very nice. Yeah. Anyway, let's get straight into the grand final. And Richmond are the favourite, as you expect. Short price favourite. But the, uh, the Giants, the last two games, have been $3.30 and above. So right now, they're around $3.30. And uh, I'm not sure whether... The... Oh, that's right there. OK, here we go. It took a long time to get up here. I was just waiting for it to get there. Three twenty and a dollar thirty-seven. One to thirty-nine. I reckon is where it is. One to thirty-nine. Richmond at two dollars to be one to thirty-nine. I can't see them blowing away the Giants. I can't see the Giants being Richmond by more than one to thirty-nine. So that's where it sits there. Three dollars sixty. Two dollars. Seems a safe bet. One to thirty-nine. Two dollars. As we have a look at some of the markets around the game, and the first one I think is the Norm Smith Medal. All the first goal score we're going to bring up. Tommy Lynch, Jack Rewalt. Hard to go past them. Hard to go past Jeremy Cameron, but Toby Green be great to kick him. Uh, Jeremy Finlayson, nice to get on the end of him too. Yep. Now the Norm Smith Medal. All the favourites of Richmond and Norm Smith Medal. Toby Green out to fourteen dollars. I think Jeremy Cameron's around fifteen dollars as well. But Dion Prestia, unless he gets tagged, look pretty good. Basha Hurley. I think Matty Debu is going to tag Dustin Martin, so I don't think Dustin Martin will win that award. And a same game, multi. I'll leave you with. I think Richmond win one to thirty nine. Prestia to get 25 or more and Toby Green to get 25 or more. Well, Good luck. Gamble there you have it. Brownie for Sportsbet. Double your winnings on the AFL Grand Final with Sportsbet. Conditions apply. Gamble responsibly. Back after this for our last segment of the year. Welcome back to Footy SA for the final time and this year. Bernie Vince is at the Plasma for his Kia Top 7 thanks to the V6 Twin Turbo Kia Stinger. Was voted the West Australian Car of the Year. I'm nervous about this. I don't know what's coming. All I'll say to you is make it good. OK, well, last time, so I can get away with anything tonight. <laughs> you can't get me back. So what we're going to do is we, we spoke about it's a bit of a poor year for Crows and Port. And uh, first one here is a crow's scarf. I don't like memorabilia getting burnt, no. but a crow's scarf on fire. Is your support? Yeah, well, uh, your... not on fire. Actually, it's not on fire. It's just been pulled apart. It's a beanie, That's but it on wasn't. Fire. That's on fire. I knew they were selling on fire. Not just myself. Yeah, but there's a Port Adelaide scarf as well. They didn't miss out. They're throwing them in the bin. You Lisa set, wasn't ripped you up. You set that up. No, I didn't actually. Umpire proposal. What are these two South Australians? Alani Gluftus and Dylan T. On ground, did you like that, Kate? No, I didn't like it at all. Did uh, they get a gig in the grand final, those two? Uh, no, because of their actions yeah. after that game. All right, what about this, Angry Port fan? I like this, getting into Himmelberg. What does Himmelberg do? He goes back and he thinks... You kick it. Runs around, kicks the goal. Have a look at the look on this bloke's face. 
Oh, oh no. That's a goal. That's a bit <laughs> embarrassing for that big fella. And this actually reminded me a little bit of you, Kane, because he decided to do this. He thought, you know what, I'm going to do this interview with my shirt off in my budgie From that smugglers. moment on, can I say, the Crows' season went completely downhill. That was about yeah. where it went wrong, wasn't and it? And they deserved and it. And I was trying to work out where the, se the season went fault. wrong. It was Lockie Murphy's fault. I need to give him a call. What about this, speaking of your mob? Watch here. What oh. is going on there? Wow. That is a serious sausage grab yeah. right there. <laughs> and you, you're a bit weird down there in Port Adelaide. But how could I leave this man out? The you bow can't. and arrow, your you man. Yep. You cannot leave him out yep. of a highlights package of the Key Top 7 what this year. What a star. Jeez, he really got yeah, the head into it towards the end of the year. I really liked it. But this is the number one. No, I can't. We could not go past this for the year. This is uh, oh. just a young fella, number 39. Who's number 39? Don't worry about any bets goal of the year. That should have been right up there. Look at that for a stat. That's outside 50 k. What about the couldn't even kick fluoro 50. orange boots? Yeah, there's highlight. What yeah, a clap. Getting a clap for that. The crowd are loving it. Please. There's something else on my rundown here that I'm nervous about. It's, you got to oh, yeah, you, throw uh, this, mate. It says Bernie throws to it. Yeah, OK. I'll, I'll throw you in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what I'm going to throw to now is just some little bit of best of Kane. Right. And you know what? You don't really have your shirt on too much, Kane, for someone that looks sort of sick and ill and a bit pale, you know? Oh, it's already going. What's Here we go. There's one? you up there. Yep, yeah, there's your photo missing up there. You, I don't know, someone stole it or you took it off or something and now you're calling yourself a port hero, I didn't flag call hero, that's anyway. your article. Nice You're getting haircut. free haircuts and Good you're looking. posting photos. You're Good starting looking. to think you're worth some sort of money or something. There's you, <laughs> that's your man there. You've got a goat shirt yep. with yourself on it and just promoting your own brand again and then that's you. That's photo, that's stupid photo wearing a photo And then, I, I, honestly, I, there was too many of these to put them all up, but have a look at you. Looking a what little a bit pale. Fine, of what a fit fine pale, weak look, athlete. Sort of look like you need some, uh, I don't know, you've been to Ethiopia <laughs> or something. I might get in the gym by the time we do the show next year, if they'll have us back. I'm you not need sure to if they season. even will have us back, but who's your tip for the grand final? Richmond or the uh, Can't go past Richmond, but I reckon it'll be a close grand final. Not Everyone just thinks Richmond's going to do this easy. I reckon it'll be a tough one. Some good players come back in for. The I'm on the Giants, Toby Green to win the Norm Smith medal. On and the Giants. Me to have a replacement co-host when we come back next year. I might replace you, Kane. Okay?